possibly Monday more of a, a machine, less of a song, more of a, um, um, a beat generator. You have to be structured because you were telling you know, machines to play play something you were conducting. We just did everything that we was, thought was really funny. Quite serious about the record, but we knew it was sort of going really different. <laughs> Which was like an anti-dance record, really. We were so offhand when we did it, you know, there was no interest in what we'd done. It's quite bizarre, actually, when you think about it. In the early 80s, Manchester was very grey, post-industrial and basically nothing happening. But it was always a vibrant music scene, always. You had Factory Records, Rabid Records and little live venues like the, the Old Factory Club and Rafters and all those kind of places. I remember going to Legends in Manchester on sort of a funk night or something and they had a fantastic sound system in there. Heaven. I could hear all these sudden frequencies that I'd never heard before. Serious sub bass, and that was an influence on the production from hearing that. We wanted to hear our song in a sort of disco clubby environment, so we decided to go in that direction, <laughs> which was very upbeat, and I think it just completely changed our outlook. I think part of the Child Room Monday is that you can hear a band changing from working with live instruments into using electronics. That kind of formula was something that I used as a kind of a blueprint for some of the work that I was doing with electronics and, and guitars and, and kind of live vocals. Tell me now, how do I feel? They were definitely clocking the right records. You know, craft work obviously you know, meant something to them. Blue Monday was influenced by Sylvester, by Kraftwerk. I remember Ian, even in the days of Joy Division, Ian used to bring Kraftwerk records to rehearsals and play them and listen to this, it's something new, you know, it's something fantastic. He used to play Kraftwerk before we went on stage as Joy Division. So the synthesizer influence came from that really. I guess it came from Ian. Maybe he knew and maybe he was showing us the way out. There wasn't a great deal of bottom end on the bass drum, so I thought, how can we generate it? And we generated it using a pulse from the bass synth and, and created a subsonic pulse that went under the bass drum. And I wanted this sharp clap sound that I'd heard on dance records, disco records from the 70s. got things like a blip in the higher register that adds rhythm, then you've got paddy synths and sustained voices that help build up the arrangement in kind of key moments. You've got thin, um, harsh electric guitar and live bass playing kind of really effective hooks. As a musician and as a bass player, I've been very lucky with what I've managed to get out of the riff bank. Uh, at that point, I was not overdrawn or anywhere near my limit. I just wrote this song once called I'm Keeping My Fingers Crossed, and um, and the bass line went um pa um pa um pa um pa um pa um pa And then about a week later, this fabulously packaged New Order record came in, and then I put it on as um pa um pa um pa um pa um pa and I nearly burst into tears because this was so much what Chris and I were trying to do. I think especially Stephen and Bernard were, were real boffins. So they'd modify stuff and they had people working. Uh, yeah, it was always just a mass of wires and buttons. It was a totally mad idea to start with because we started off with huge sections of sequences and then we didn't have the technology at the time to sequence them all together. Hi, I'm Martin Usher. I'm the engineer who helped New Order make Blue Monday. I was well known amongst uh, 
various music people in Manchester because they always have things that need fixing and I'm an engineer. Bernard in particular always struck me as always trying out something. He had a lot of ideas about what he wanted to do, but they didn't have quite the education at times to make stuff happen. So uh, I'd give them a hand to connect things up or make things work, that kind of stuff. He's got a sequencer and he's got a drum machine and it's like, okay, you want an interface? There you go. This is a drum synthesizer. The Oberheim DMX. It's a relatively affordable drum machine. And its key attribute was it also had outputs, which they could then distribute to other instruments. They liked to do that because it uh, kept them all in time. You know, the drum machine basically drove the band. You had to know a little bit about music. You had to learn a little bit about music and the way that music got constructed. You couldn't just rely on this bit. It feels right to change here, you know, and you'd normally just nod and then everybody knew it was the right place. But night machines aren't like that. The laid-back attitude did help them. I think it was also a question of budget. They were able to make a modern synth-based sound using low-budget equipment and all sorts of ingenious tricks to achieve that vision. Sometimes those limitations help give you that edge and help define things. Some of the dirt and grit that you hear in, in Blue Mondays is kind of what makes it so iconic. The first couple of times I played it in the Hacienda, because I had the acetate, and acetates, they only lasted about 10 to 12 plays, then they wear out. But the DJ box of the Hacienda, was, there was a door at the back where people could come, and there's people banging on the door, going, what's this, what's this? It sounds like Bernard. You know, I'm like, yes, yeah, a new order. You know. People were blown over by it. Blue Monday is such a timeless track, and you can hear its influence throughout the 80s, and how it affected kind of dance music, even today. It's still one of the most influential British electronic records now. It started this big cross-friendship thing with New York, with like Arthur Baker and John Roby. Um, all these DJs were just freaking out over it. Well, I think just the fact that the marriage of sort of what they did with sort of New York hip hop sort of gave impetus to, you know, a lot of the other groups, you know, Happy Mondays, uh, Stereo MCs, a lot of the groups coming out of, out of England. I think the record, that its legacy speaks for itself, you know. I think it's the biggest selling dance 12 inch single of all time. It's still ever present in our lives and probably always will be. That's how we wrote Blue Monday. Simple as that.